Hey, what is up? Welcome to this episode of the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Lofermento, and we are joined today by somebody who is incredibly passionate about what he does. He is incredibly talented, and he loves breaking all the rules and completely changing your perspective on what it means to be successful and to grow a business. I'm so very excited about today's conversation. Let me tell you about today's guest. His name is Greg Reitman. He's a seasoned marketer and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in the online space. He's currently the CEO of the Icon Agency, which they are up to incredible work. I can't wait to talk about that. Greg is also a video artist and has been featured in exhibits all over the world. He also owned an art gallery in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. So many exciting aspects of Greg's life from the creative to the business side to marketing. To tell you a little bit about his agency, the Icon Agency is a full service marketing agency for rule breaking, trend setting, industry industry disrupting online coaches and entrepreneurs. They work in six month sprints. I love that business model with their clients, providing them with a business plan, one-on-one mentorship, strategy and accountability coaching as well as done for you assets. There's so many things that I can't wait to dive into, so I'm not gonna say anything else. Let's dive straight into my interview today with Greg Reitman. Greg, clearly I'm all sorts of excited today. Welcome to the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me. I'm really excited for this. Heck yeah. And the one thing I didn't mention in the intro, but obviously I know it from my research about the work that you do is you are a New Yorker, a New Yorker. So listeners, be ready for some direct advice from Greg (laughs) here today. Greg, fill in all those gaps beyond the bio though for listeners. Who the heck is Greg? How did you get here? Yeah. So I, um, I grew up in New Jersey not to go way back, but I will, um, grew up in New Jersey. I went to school, um, in upstate New York. I went to Ithaca college and um it was a great experience there and right after that i moved to manhattan um it wasn't too far away from my home and uh growing up in new jersey we used to go there you know into manhattan all the time in high school and so it wasn't a huge stretch for me to to do that but i studied marketing in in college and when i graduated and moved to manhattan i was really intrigued by the online space and this was you know i'm dating myself here but this was the late 90s i graduated in 98 and i worked um in the online space i worked for a a company called net music school and this was a school um, that taught guitar and piano lessons over the internet now i know like that sounds not that archaic now, but back then this was like HTML1 and it was super old school, but at the time it was totally revolutionary. So I worked there, I was doing uh, online marketing there for a long time and you know, things shifted. Um, I ended up working at another startup and then I kind of transitioned to, uh, I worked at a company, barnesandnoble.com and there um, I managed search engine marketing and um i was there for a couple months uh and then i um got promoted to managing all of search engine marketing for the entire uh business which is a great experience um but at the time you know i was it was it was interesting in the sense that you know it was the first kind of corporate environment that i worked in um but something was kind of pulling me away a little bit and i ended up taking a course um an editing course because you know marketing at the time you know the search engine marketing it wasn't totally like up my alley um towards the end and i really wanted to change kind of directions in my career so i took an editing course and actually i I took an editing course and what i had was i had started this project called 30 second life and this was a um project where i would i would take a flip video cam and this was old school this is before the iphone and i would just kind of go around and i was living in manhattan at the time and i would just shoot footage and and do a lot of different kind of stuff like that and i would turn it into a music video and upload it to vimeo and vimeo just i think started at that point um and it was it was really interesting and i kind of built this whole community around this 30 second life and you can kind of equate it to um what instagram stories is now now you think you know everyone just kind of documents their life but this was before instagram and it was a great experience and i really learned like the craft of storytelling 
doing this project. So then I went to the school, this editing school called the Edit Center, and it was really interesting. And I learned how to edit. It was in Final Cut Seven, and from there I left my. I pretty much left marketing for a little bit and decided I wanted to become an editor. And I started over from the age of 30, I guess I was like 32 at the time, started interning. And then I worked my way up as an assistant editor and then started cutting music videos. And um, yeah, it was just a great experience. I know I'm, I'm going all over the place, but um, yeah, so that's kind of, that was kind of what uh, led me to the editing field. So yeah. Yeah, I love that overview, Greg, for so many reasons, especially because I don't think we call it out enough in the world of entrepreneurship, how much we get to reinvent ourselves. So I'm 34 right now. Hearing you say that at 32, you literally reinvented yourself is incredible. It shows. And obviously, we hear those success stories like so-and-so didn't make their first million until they were 68 or, you know, those crazy extreme stories. But I love that. I love these real life stories. And it's so fascinating hearing about, I'm going to call you an OG, Greg. I'm sure you feel that way. <laughs> in a lot of ways. It's the OG of marketing because you're right. Man, I started my business in 2007, which was built on WordPress. WordPress back then, everyone always asked me, how do I know programming? You had to know PHP and CSS and all these other programming totally. languages. Yeah. And people don't realize that today. How many, how how much today's tools and technology means that we don't have to learn these things. But Greg, you and I had to, and, and you more so than me, because you truly are an OG in this space, which leads me to understanding why you have such strong opinions about the way that things are going today. So take us to present day, take us to the icon agency and why you sure. guys have such a strong message about the way that you do business, because I'm going to call some of it out in the next few questions, but I want to hear it from you first. Sure. So just uh, just to give a little context, uh, the Icon Agency um, is a company that my wife and I started in 2020 after the pandemic. Um, we were finding that a lot of people were leaving their corporate jobs and wanting to become coaches. Now, everything from, you know, wellness coaches to business coaches to life coaches. And we we're finding a real hole in the market because these coaches were coming out of this corporate environment. And they really um, didn't have much experience in the in the coaching space, or if they did have experience, they were kind of just like coming along and trying to figure it out as they were going. So we wanted to create a marketing agency that targeted coaches and help them build their online business. Now we kind of like to say that you know we're in the business of building personal brands. So the agency essentially what we do is. Uh, when a client comes on, uh, we work in what we call like six month sprints. So a client comes on and in turn, they get an intensive with my wife and I, it's like a 90 minute intensive. And doing that, um, we then take all that information and we create what we call like a business blueprint. And essentially what that is, it's a marketing plan. And it's a marketing plan that we come up with for the client. Uh, which is where we see their business going in the next three to six months. So they then have that. They sign off on the on the business blueprint. And then it's a series of coaching, uh, strategy coaching. And then we have accountability and project management coaching. And then we have this whole other division of the business where we have what we call like expert collaborators. Now, the expert collaborators is everyone from a podcast producer, a copywriter, a... Um, a who else copywriter branding so pretty much anything that that needs to touch marketing um is involved in this process and in the process of this business blueprint we in turn um provide provide all of our clients with like these options of what they can choose so they get to choose and if we think you know this one of the coaches for example of a life coach who needs a podcast they'll then get a get connected to a podcast producer. So it's kind of an all-in-one um, service where we're really helping coaches go from A to B. And, you know, the interesting thing is like in the coaching space, um, you know, it's really evolved over the past five, 10 years. Um, but a lot of these coaches, you know, it's a lot of mindset work. 
and it's a lot of you know really like getting your head on straight and doing stuff like that but at the end of the day after you work with a coach there's very little like tangible kind of like assets so what we try and encourage all of our clients and kind of the business that we're in is that when a client is done with us after six months they have a sales page they have copywriting they have new branding so they have all of these actual things that they can take with them to create uh, a sustainable coaching business yeah, Greg, I freaking love that overview, chief of which is because one of my favorite words when I talk to any service provider is, what are the deliverables? And you're right, you are left with a functional business that is ready for growth. And, and Greg, I'm going to tack on, this is what I want to call out for listeners, because I want to hear your take on this, is that when, oh, and the other thing I want to actually, before we move on to the next question is, I want to call out that essentially what you guys have done, you and your wife together with the Icon Agency, is you've literally built an agency that gives coaches or entrepreneurs in general, because I know you guys work with a lot of people, yeah. but you give them the backroom support staff of a seven figure, an eight figure agency. You guys are not trying to build average, you know, struggling to get by 5k a month agencies. You guys are really powering big successful ones. And, that, and that's exactly, this leads me into what I want to call out is that when we first came across the work that you and your wife do with the icon agency, it's right there in your copy. Your copy is extraordinarily strong, which makes sense for two New York but it's things like I'm going to read some of it for listeners who obviously can't see your website as they're tuning in but your copy says things like you're not like all the others trendsetters wanted F all the rules CEO millionaire status loading let's make money moves Greg talk to me about how and why your approach is so differently because for me as someone looking in from the outside I'm like you guys are hungry for tangible rapid deliverable type of growth right out of the gates what what creates that approach yeah so you know a lot of this stuff you know i i i want to hand over to my wife in terms of you know the writing and the messaging you know she really has an amazing kind of handle on um clients and she was actually doing business coaching before i came on board so a lot of the messaging and the and and i would also like to mention that about 98 percent of our clients are all women and you know there is something to be said about this this movement of empowering women, um, you know, uh, to make a lot of money and to empower women to kind of step into their own, um, you know, their own uh, CEO status where, you know, it's, you know, it's like as guys, you know, we kind of, to be honest, like we take it for granted um, a lot of times in terms of, you know, uh, being able to climb the corporate ladder versus women to find trying to co climb the corporate ladder and you know there's there's limitations and it's really unfortunate but you know that's you know it's some it's one of the things that my wife erica and i really try and push is that you know it's really important you know like let's really try and step into you know what we're trying to do here how do you scale your business and how do you make a lot a lot of money yeah, I love hearing that overview from you and especially huge shout out to Erica. Obviously, she's not on air with us today, but her voice, her strength, her perspective on all of this is very evident in all the work that you guys do. Anyone who goes to your website, icon.agency, we'll talk about it at the end of today's episode, but you'll see Erica in action all over the website. It's some of the best copy, quite frankly, that I've ever seen in my life. And Greg, you spoke to it. I think it is important to call out that as someone, I've worked with students for a decade now, helping other entrepreneurs grow their own businesses and it's something that I've always seen men will very happily step into that role of yeah let's go get business let's go get clients whereas traditionally when we talk about and it doesn't have to be gender gender specific it's more masculine energy and feminine energy traditionally it's the more feminine energy that's a little more hesitant saying well hold on let's make sure these things are in order so I love the way that you guys blend the two of those I've got to ask you this Greg because it's something that stands out so much about your approach is the rules you talk Talk about breaking all the rules, whether it be talking about masculine and feminine energy, whether it be the rules of marketing, what are these rules that you are so set out to helping people break? Because let's face it, entrepreneurs, we love breaking the rules. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, it's it, when you think of like traditional marketing, you know, back in the day, it's like, you know, you take an ad out on the on the New York Times and, you know, just hope and hope and hope someone's actually going to read it and look and then respond and 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 actually do something tangible with with what they're reading. And what really what we're trying to do now is like it's all about the personal brand and, you know, not only do you, you know, for example, like if I'm going to uh, 
an accountant and needs to do my taxes. You know, I look at that personal brand because it's more than just this facade of a website. It's more than just this facade of like, you know, this is what I do. This is how much I charge, blah, 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 and all that stuff. It's really about the personal brand and what the value is that the person who's in front of the business can, can really provide. And, you know, that has a lot to do with personality. That has a lot to do with, you know, what are someone's, what's someone's take on the world and what they look at and what they believe in and all of that stuff. So I would just say that like, you know, building a personal brand, especially now and, you know, in these times with TikTok and Instagram, um, you know, it's just, it's so vital and just breaking the rules. It's just like show up as, you know, a lot of people say just be authentic, but it, it really is true. Like show up, be your authentic self. And, you know, when you're marketing a product, people resonate with that. I mean, for us, people resonate when Erica gets online and when I'm online and we're talking about things totally transparent, how much money we make, how much our uh, clients make and stuff like that. And, you know, it's really it's really important, I think, for people to show their authentic self in order to kind of be successful in these in these days, in this climate. Yes, amen to that. It's self-evident in all, honestly. Like, I'm so excited for listeners to get a chance to check out your website after hearing us talk here today because one of the things that immediately stands out to me is you and Erica are all over it. The photo shoot that you guys must have done had to have been a ton of fun for both of you because you're both just being overtly you and you're clearly having fun individually, but also together. It's something that stands out so much. Talk to us a little bit more about that because because whether it's your copy, whether it's your visuals, what are all the ways that you've injected both yourself and Erica into all the touch points, all the deliverables inside what you do? Yeah, sure. So in terms of in terms of the branding, you know, it's obviously, you know, obviously a logo is important, but behind that, as I was mentioning earlier, um, about, you know, just like the personal brand and showing up on Instagram and TikTok and all that, it's like, the visuals are so important. And you would think that like in the coaching space, it would be all about just like talking in text and it'd be over Twitter, that kind of thing. But for me, like, it's really important to show those visuals and to show those, um, those elements because it really stands out in your personality when you see all these things. You know, when you see us walking down the street in Mexico City where we're living currently, you know, you see the trees, you, you see the tree-lined streets, you see all the cafes, and there's, you know, there's something, you know, frankly, that's aspirational about that. There are probably a lot of people that are working in their nine-to-five jobs right now that would would love to be able to live abroad, that would love to be able to have their own business and be an entrepreneur. And, you know, we like to give a flavor of that. And it's important, you know. Um, So, yeah, that would just be that would just be one example of that. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Greg, because I'm sure it's something that comes up a lot. Obviously, it's very intentional on behalf of you and Erica about how much you talk about six and seven figure businesses. You make it abundantly clear that you are looking to help people live abundant lives. And part of that is obviously money. Talk to us about it because I've seen all different sides of entrepreneurship. Greg, you've seen it since the very beginning days of online entrepreneurship. Talk to me about some of those ways that you've seen that traditionally we talk about money or avoid talking about money. And then most importantly, why being money focused is an essential part of the equation and how it helps us to not only be more strategic, but I would actually argue, and I'm sure you will as well, that it actually helps us to better serve people at the right level, within the right scopes, with the right services. Talk to us about that and why it plays so much into your brand and your marketing. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, I would I answer that with one word, which is freedom. And, you know, for us, you know, being able to be an entrepreneur and being able to, um, you know, being an entrepreneur and being able to kind of like create these businesses and create these environments for, for our clients to thrive, you know, it's just, it's, it's something that's, that's kind of embedded in us. You know, we've been doing it for a really long time. We've started businesses before some of, gone really well some have failed but at the end of the day like it's this freedom and you know to be able to live abroad and to be able to do these kind of things where you know money you know gives us that freedom and gives our clients that freedom it's just it's not to, not to be a, not to have a pun but it's really valuable you know it's it's a really important aspect of of business you know i mean people kind of shy away from it um people shy away they say you know i just want to you know 
just want to have a business and help people and this and that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like you need the freedom and you want to be able to do things and, and, you know, and money really does gives, gives us and our clients the flexibility to be able to do that. Heck yes to that. It's something all of us listeners, we all need this reminder and Greg is bringing the heat for us here today. I love that. Greg, I feel like I let you off the hook a little easy earlier because I'm, I always am just thinking, what are the listeners screaming at their car speakers or their headphones saying, Brian, you got to ask about this. And I think one of those things is you've mentioned it a few times already, which is why I want to come back to it, is that business blueprint. Greg, let's face it. You guys, one of the ways that you're doing such different work is that most people don't have a plan. They don't have a blueprint. And I, I particularly love that. Thinking about architectural terms, for example, the blueprint of a building. You know exactly what's going where so that you can plan and you can execute. Talk to us about what goes into the business blueprint that you provide for sure. people. So originally, before we even take on a client, there's an application that people fill out. So once the application gets accepted, we already have a pretty good sense of, you know, their Instagram account, their their, um, their TikTok, um, and kind of their offers, how much they're currently making, and all of that. So when we when we bring them on as a client, essentially what happens is we have what we like to call like a 90 minute intensive. And the 90 minute intensive is really Erica and myself sitting down and really getting into the weeds of asking questions. And it's a lot of questions. And we're really getting a sense of, you know, what are the motivations of the clients? Is Do they want to make a ton of money? Is, is this more of a lifestyle brand for them? Is this, you know, are they... Are they, you know, almost retired and just kind of want to have fun for a couple of years coaching people? Or are they kind of in the infancy and do they want to really scale their business and make millions and millions of dollars in the next three to five years? So we kind of go through this, this kind of iteration. And when we take all that information, we come back and we take all these ideas. Uh, you know, Eric and I, you know, we sit down uh and it generally takes a, a few days, full days of not only um, putting the ideas together, but so so the way it's broken down is we'll, we'll kind of reimagine their offer suite. So maybe they have a course that they're launching, but they want to launch, they're thinking of launching a mastermind. So we can figure out ways to kind of incorporate both of those together. Um, so we'll come up with all of the ideas of, um, the different offers. We'll come up with the ideas of different price points. We'll also, we have a whole section that are called like crazy ideas where um, we actually put together about 10 to 15 different ideas that, you know, are totally out of the box that we think that could be, you know, something really interesting for them to work on. And, you know, and then the next steps and the next steps would be, you know, we think, for example, like we think you need you need a podcast, you need new copywriting for a website, and you need social media help on TikTok. So those are the recommendations we would give. And then once everyone signed off on on the blueprint, we then have them work with the podcast producer, copywriter, social media person. So you know it's kind of an all in one um, situation where you know we're helping not only like the client look it's almost like a mirror. They're looking at themselves and they're looking at a new perspective on what the business, what their business can look like. And then we're helping them execute that. Dang, I love what you just shared with us, including the fact that your business blueprint includes a whole section just called crazy ideas. I love it's that. I all, that. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd all benefit from enabling ourselves to more entertain those crazy ideas. It actually fits in perfectly with where I want to go from here because I want to read a snippet of your copy from your website for listeners. So one part of your website, it says, you deserve a business that makes you a millionaire. Actually, F it, a multimillionaire. We want you to be taking client calls from your yacht and your Gucci swimsuit while your kid is on spring break from Harvard. Sipping Topo Chico out of a glass bottle, duh, on your first class flight to the Maldives. Things like that. And Greg, here's where I want to go from here is that I learned probably in my late 20s. I wish I learned it a heck of a lot sooner. But what I learned is that the bigger questions you ask, the bigger answers you will find. And for me, what that copy spells out, getting chills even as I say it, <laughs> is in my early 20s when I was asking myself, gosh, how do I make it so I can pay my student loans this month? 
month. I was finding answers that told me how to pay my student loans that month. It wasn't until I started, especially when I moved to LA, I think LA brings out the dreamer inside of all of us. When I moved to LA and I saw people driving around in Bugattis, I was like, man, how do I make the type of money that one day I could drive a Bugatti? You start finding different answers. Greg, talk to me about that. I know that you're also big on this mindset stuff. Lead us into here. Yeah. I mean, when I first started, you know, in my, in my career, when I wasn't, you know, when I was making, you know, right out of the gate, I think I was making like $25,000 and, you know, working with like, a like even back then talking to a mentor, I remember specifically, he was like, well, how much money do you want to do you want to make this year? I was like, well, I'd love to get, you know, to get to $35,000. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where if you don't, you know, when you don't have the answers to the questions, like when you don't even know what you don't know, it's really hard to get there. It's really hard to kind of get those answers to those questions so you can get to that next level in your business. Um, and I would just say that like, you know, as things progress, you know, I, I had an art gallery, um, I'm, I'm in Mexico City now, but prior I was living in um, in San Miguel de Allende and I, and I had opened an art gallery there. And it was really interesting because a lot of the artists that I was representing, um, they were all local artists. And it was interesting because they were kind of looking to me because, you know, I had, a, it was a, it was a, uh, a gallery slash agency. So I was not only helping them with the art on the walls, but also helping them tell their story um, with video and through video and social media. So they kind of looked at me as, as a mentor as well. And just seeing that, you know, it is possible to do a lot of different stuff and make a lot of money, frankly, you know, just by, you know, expanding your skill sets and, you know, really just kind of stepping into your own, into your own way. And, you know, it's just something that I just feel like I've done over my, over the course of my career. And, and, you know, it's, it's worked out. I mean, that's not to say there haven't been setbacks. I mean, it hasn't been all roses uh, all the time, but, you know, you know, I feel, I feel very blessed. Yeah, I love that perspective, especially because you use the word expand. And and that's really what not only our entrepreneurial journey is, but heck, let's face it, our life journey. And yeah, I I love hearing that. You reminded me my first salaried position outside of college was a whopping $42,000 a year. And I had $80,000 in student loan debt. And you're right, back then you and I were looking, you were looking for $35,000 answer. And would you have found that? Could you have found that? Yes. But Greg, I'm so glad that along the way you stopped asking yourself $35,000 questions and you started asking multi-million dollar questions because you start finding those different answers and and here at our podcast it's the whole reason why every single week we talk about mindset and motivation it's to me the mindset journey of entrepreneurship is truly what ultimately strategy aside it's going to set entrepreneurs apart and I know that you are a big aficionado when it comes to personal development mental health all those things talk to us about some of those you mentioned some setbacks talk to us about those expansions that you you've experienced in your entrepreneurial and your life journey? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to be transparent about all of this. Um, You know, after my job working uh, at those startups in like 1998, uh, I had a major setback. I had, you know, a serious uh, mental illness and, you know, I had to take a break from work for a good three to five years. It was, it was a really long and um, it was a big struggle in terms of recovery. Um, But I think, you know, dealing with, um, you know, having a mental illness and dealing with having mental health struggles, um, it really made me a lot more empathetic, not more empathetic because I feel like I always was, but after, you know, having, having a lot of these kind of issues, it really made me, you know, empathetic in terms of, you know, how I see the world and how I see people and how, you know, I relate to people. And it's really, you know, come across in, in how I manage people these days and how I, you know, kind of like was working up through the ranks of like the corporate ladder and then having my own businesses. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, those are setbacks, but, you know, those are the things that like when a really bad chapter happens in your life, you know, something good is going to happen after it. And I'm a firm believer in when, you know, crap hits the fan, you know, it really makes you appreciate life and give you an interesting perspective on what life is really all about. 
And, you know, and, and I feel very grateful that, you know, I'm feeling good these days and, 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 you know, and everything's, everything's good. Yes. Amen to that. And Greg, this is why I love having incredible people like you here on the podcast, because you and I are just for listeners sake, we have not planned any of this. Like this is just a real conversation. And Greg, I would argue, and I'm sure you agree with me on this is that we as entrepreneurs owe it to all entrepreneurs in the world. And and even beyond that, obviously all people, you and I both love people is to be having these conversations in public because it is a very harsh reality that all of us entrepreneurs, I would argue we experience higher highs highs than most quote unquote normal people and lower lows than most normal people. And with that in mind, it, it's fascinating to me, the big work that you and Erica get to do with your clients and with your agency. I'm sure so much of that, when you present to a client, here's your seven figure blueprint. Here's how we're going to get you there. I'm sure in the moment, it's just sheer elation and excitement. They're like, let's hit the ground running. Inevitably, they will pitch a client and be told no, they will inevitably run yeah. into tech troubles. What are some of those things that you see from your vantage point now with all your life and business experience that you see more beginners having it? And, and what is the guidance that you give them to support them through that? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think, you know, this big thing around like imposter, imposter syndrome, um, you know, when people think that, you know, especially coaches, because, you know, it's a lot of you know, when someone becomes a coach that's coming from a corporate uh, that's coming from a corporate background and becomes a coach, there's a lot of there is a lot of that kind of happening in, in the sense that like they've never done it before, they've never become a coach. And you know, how do you convince you know if you've never been a coach but you have the experience, how do you convince someone to hire you and pay you all this money? So I think that's like a really big hurdle to get around the fact that you know there is a mindset aspect to that, you know, like, you know, there's a confidence aspect. And one of the things we really try to instill in our clients is to have that confidence and to be able to go when you're trying to get new clients and when you're showing up on Instagram or showing up on TikTok, you're actually, you know, you have the confidence because, you know, it, it exudes from you, you know, like if you don't, if, you, if that doesn't come across, you know, it's going to be very difficult for people to want to hire you. So that's one of the really important things, I think, in terms of like the mindset, the keep bringing out some confidence um, in you to be able to kind of get to that next level. Yeah, Greg, I'm going to put you on the spot here because I'm fascinated to hear how you work or help people work through that. I think that's an incredible example. And I'm going to give it a... A big disclaimer here is that I'm so grateful I started my first business when I was 19 years old because as a 19 year old, you have no fear. You have no reservations. You don't know what you don't know. And I equate it, for example, as an adult now, like I'm aware that I have joints. I can feel my knees, unfortunately, when I wake up in the morning now that I'm in my 30s. And so if someone's like, oh, I dare you to jump off this thing, like as a 34 year old, I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like I know the dangers of it. But as kids, we'll just do anything. We'll jump into a pool off the roof. Top. Yeah. And so now as adults, it's it's almost it's a blessing and a curse. We're obviously far more knowledgeable. We're far more experienced. But at the same time, we're far more risk adverse and, and risk aware as well. How do you coach someone through this? Someone who's had a whole career of doing great in a corporate environment where all of a sudden they feel like a four year old again. And they're like, well, how the heck do I gain the energy or, or confidence to do that? That's great. That's a great question. Um you know, I feel like it doesn't really matter, you know, like what age you are, there's always going to be that, that kind of that person in your head or that person on, on top of your shoulder that's, that's saying to yourself, like, can't do this. Like, what are you thinking? And I know for myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 47 this month. And, you know, throughout my career, I've, I've gone through that and, and felt the same way. So I would just say that in terms of minds, in terms of like how we work with our clients, it's really just about like, we have one client right now and she almost forgets she's, I think she's in, you know, her late forties, early fifties. She forgets the amazing, amazing corporate experience she's had over the past 25, 30 years and sometimes it's just a simple reminder of like, here's your bio. Like, look, look what you've done. This is amazing. You know, this is the kind of stuff you need to take with you, you know, when you're trying to get clients or you're building your own mastermind or you're building out your own course. So that, that's what I would say to that. 
Yeah, I love that you picked that example and that you leaned on her bio saying, look at all your life experiences. Because Greg, I've got to ask you this question. I'm going to let you be the one who comes on our show and dispels this myth for people. Okay, we have a lot of coaches inside the entrepreneur to entrepreneur community. And like you said, you made the list earlier, all different types of coaches, life, fitness, business, nutrition coaches, everybody in there. And Greg, the one thing that I constantly see holding coaches back, this is my perspective who's way outside of the coaching industry, is certifications. All these coaches feel like they need to get certified. Now, Greg, you and I are OGs in many respects in in the fields that we operate in. Anytime people have asked me like, well, Brian, are are you certified? Like, how do you talk about business stuff all day long? And I'm like, yes, I am certified since I was 19 years old growing my own businesses. I've never felt the need to get those external certifications. I thought I had a fancy business school degree since I graduated. No, nobody ever asks me about it. Greg, what's your take on certifications? I mean, my, my take is yes, sure. Certifications are great. It's a, it's a focused area of, you know, a year, two years, you know, on and off, whatever the certification program is. Sure. You know, for me, you know, it's, it's not as, it's not as important. Um, just because, you know, I've been doing entrepreneurial work and I've been doing stuff for, you know, over two decades and, for me, I feel like I can bring that experience with me. But at the same time, you know, like there is certain elements of coaching that, you know, I'm only a couple years in and I, you know, I consider myself kind of the CEO of the business. I look at my wife, Erica, as the strategy coach. I mean, I do do coaching in the sense that, you know, I'll do accountability and project management kind of coaching. But that's all just stuff that comes second nature to me, you know? And I think, you know, there's there's something to be said about being a coach and having this like natural instinct with people. And you can't teach that, I don't think. You know, you can you can teach mechanisms, you can teach, you know, methodologies, you can teach all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, I really think it's 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 a matter of instinct and it's a matter of how do you deal with people, how do you relate with people? And um, you know, that that's kind of my take on that. Yeah, and I'm going to echo that for all of you listeners who are, you get that imposter syndrome. We're really tying in so many topics that we've talked about today is that think about the equation that I always, or the analogy that I always lean back on is Roger Federer has a tennis coach. At the end of the day, Roger Federer is the greatest tennis player to walk the planet. In my opinion, some people disagree, but he has a tennis coach and is his tennis coach a better tennis? tennis player than Federer? No, absolutely not. But Greg, all the traits that you just listed, are they empathetic? Can they listen? Can they hold you accountable? That's the stuff that's important. You don't have to be the best at it. You need to be good at what you do in supporting people. So, so many insights there, Greg, that I really appreciate you coming on. Gosh, I don't want to let you go because there's so much. I feel like we're only scratching the tip of the iceberg, but I want to put you on the spot here for listeners who are thinking, this is probably a fresh way of thinking. That's, I knew that would be the case in today's episode is that you're challenging them to think differently and, and you're for sure knocking down a lot of internal barriers that they probably thought they had. What's something, what's a good piece of advice that you have for listeners? who have listened to this and said, gosh, maybe I do need to be more money focused. Maybe I do need to start asking bigger, better questions so I can start finding bigger, better answers. With all of those things in mind, what's something that you think entrepreneurs listening to this should sit down and do today or ask themselves or think about when it comes to growing in a more tangible way that that you and Erica help people with? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that, you know, writing out stuff, writing out your goals, you know, writing out kind of where you want to be a year, two years, three years down the road has really been helpful for for both Erica and myself in terms of like where we want to see ourselves, you know, like, you know, I don't want to be working for the next 15, 20 years. I know that for a fact. So it's like, you know, we, we can actually like take out a spreadsheet and say, okay, well, you know, this is the number we need to hit. So we can actually have the flexibility to do other things in our life, you know, because you know, at the end of the day, is Icon Agency going to be around in the next 20 years? I hope so. I don't know. But at the, at the same time, you know, 
our our skills and you know things are going to evolve you know over over time where who knows what the, what the next chapter is going to be so i would just say that you know writing your goals down really kind of coming up with this not even necessarily like in our business the business blueprint just having your own blueprint and it doesn't just have to be business focused it can be life focused and it can be you know where do you want to see you know your relationships go in the next year you know if you're married how do you you know um you know how do you want you know your relationship to kind of evolve over the years and, and stuff like that i just feel like you know writing things down having things tangible that you can look at is has been super helpful for me yeah i absolutely love that advice on a business level and for sure on a life level reminds me of that martin luther king jr quote where he said you don't have to see the whole staircase just take the next step and too many people are operating without even knowing what's at the end of the staircase let's use the map analogy is that yeah as greg said what gets him to his destination may change along the way, but if you know your destination, the roads, you might hit some detours here and there, but you can always at least keep moving in the right direction. So Greg, I love that business-wise and personal-wise. Super valuable insights there. Anything else? Because I want to open the stage up for you to tell listeners where to learn more about you, but I can just tell with how engaged you are, how passionate you are, how skillful you are, that there's probably something on your mind that you're just like, no, I want to leave listeners with this. Is there anything else you want to add here at the end of today's session yeah i mean one thing i really didn't talk too much about is is in terms of like social media um is community and the way we built our business the icon agency we haven't spent a dime on ads in this past ever frankly um and one of the things that really kind of um you know helped us with our clients is just building this kind of community on instagram and you know people kind of i don't want to say it's a movement by any means because that's a little sounds a little pompous but you know there is something to be said about you know people who follow us on on instagram and TikTok. there's this there's this kind of these values that i think a lot of people share with us um, and it's kind of like we're just going on this journey together. I mean, when we launched the Icon Agency, we used to have these fun things called board meetings. And it was just literally, you know, Erica and myself and the company. So we had these board meetings on Instagram Live. And it was just like fun. We would talk about it as if we were this like 300 person company, but it was just the two of us. And we talk about all the things we did to launch this agency. You know, we were talking about that we bought the URL, icon.agency. We started the Instagram account. And we just talked about all the struggles and all the challenges that we were facing starting up this business. And, you know, people love that. They they ate it up, you know. It's like we're building this kind of community and it's really helped us. I mean, 95% of um, all of our clients come through TikTok and Instagram and it's all community-based. So I would just say that, like, throughout my career and throughout my experience, you know, community is, is, has been a really, really, really important um, aspect of both us, like in our lives, in my wife and mine's lives, and also in business. Yes, Greg, I'm so glad that you added that. If you're not going to call it a movement, then I am. One of our <laughs> fundamental mottos here at the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast is that quote. It's one of my favorite quotes ever. A rising tide lifts all boats. So it's no surprise to me that the people who are following the work that you and Eric are doing, it inspires me. I love even talking about your business <laughs> here on the show today. And That's it's great. because whether it's a movement, whether it's a rising tide, you guys are helping to lift all boats for everyone who's in your ecosystem, which I think it's a natural segue. Greg, listeners are going to want to know where the heck they can go to learn more about you, all the work that you and Erica are doing on the Icon Agency. Drop all those places for us. Okay, so there's a bunch. So uh, for me, it's uh, Instagram. You can find me on Instagram at Greg underscore Reitman, R-E-I-T-M-A-N. Uh, you can follow everything going on with the Icon Agency on Instagram at, at the.icon.agency. Um, what else? The Icon Agency website is icon.agency. And then all my personal stuff, my videos, my video art, all that stuff, you can find it flyingblind.com, F-L-Y-I-N-G-B-L-Y-N-D.com. 
<laughs> yes, listeners, you know the drill. Wherever it is that you're tuning into today's episode, you can find all those links that Greg just dropped on us down in the show notes. So don't be shy. And Greg is so multi-passionate and incredibly talented. Check out his work. The reason why he dropped his personal stuff there is because he's really freaking good at so many different things. So don't be shy about checking out Icon Agency's website at www.icon.agency. It's the easiest way to get to their business website. Check the show notes for all the other links, including their socials. Definitely follow them because the rising tide lifts all boats. Greg, thank you so much in so many ways for coming on and sharing all of this stuff with us on the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. Thank you so much, Brian. I really appreciate it. Um, I feel very grateful that um, you invited me on here and I'm super excited to, uh, to, um, to listen to uh, more of your uh, episodes. Heck yeah. Thank you.